Uh, first, I just want to say this is really exciting. I've been on a couple of panels about cross-sector collaboration. This is the best attended, as far as, I mean, you're all wonderful people, but the, the <laughs> number of people here is the best attended I've seen at a World of Conference. It really is an effort. It's a conversation we haven't figured out completely. I'm really happy to see the theme at the conference today. There's another workshop following up after this that Urban Cole is part of. Also, we'll just say that two of my fellow steering committee members for the Valley Cooperative Business Association are here. Urban, if you could raise your hand, please. This is the executive director of the Neighboring Food Co-op Association, Suzette Snow Cobb, co-general manager of Frank Community Co-op. I'm also going to point out Mika, who works at a co-op front of New England, who supported this process with uh, time and resources. So my name is Adam. I'm the staff developer for the Valley Alliance of Worker Co-ops. And part of that, I am on the steering committee along with Suzette Urban, John Reske, and Sean Kapilov Jones of the Valley Cooperative Business Association. Came together last year, late last year, <coughs> more or less late last year, to talk about you know how can we work together. And I just want to show you a couple of things about what's going on. Introduce two of the things that are bringing us together. Um, IYC, the UN chose a business model for a theme in 2012. Sometimes I feel really detached from the themes that happen at the UN. There's a weird relationship between the US and the UN. But I, I really remarked at the fact that the UN didn't choose a traditional business model as a theme. They did not choose nonprofits as a theme. They chose the co-op model. Our model, member run, democratic involvement. Also, principle six. Of course, a lot of us do worker cooperative work. A lot of the co ops here are working across in one sector. That's a very valuable aspect of inter cooperation. Just want to mention that too. But today we're going to talk about inter cooperation across sectors. So here's you know, sort of what we were starting with a bunch of co ops. You, know, you can see worker co ops up here. There's um, credit unions, there's food co ops. What we wanted to do is bring that together, bring the unique voices together to share what we had and, and present that to our community. There are shared advantages, there are shared history, there are shared principles, shared identity. So there's a lot to work with, but the conversation is difficult. So we wanted to get together, develop a general direction, and then start out to embark with delivering value for people, for co-ops to bring in and say, hey, we want you as members. So how it started was really just a couple of the four, the five of us getting together in meetings and talking about what we had available, what was possible, what we wanted, what we shared. And that's, a, it's a, again, a long conversation. Um, we also were, you know, as many of you are, studied international models where cross-sector collaboration was happening. In the Romano region of Italy, some parts of Spain and Confico, uh, Canada, etc. And in Japan as well, I want to point out the gentleman from Japan and say that there's a lot of wonderful, exciting work happening across sectors in Japan. Thank you for coming. And we sort of chose that, that we wanted to say that VCBA just wants to carry out a role of representation, <coughs> assistance, and promotion in the cooperative movement. Uh, that's sort of sometimes a general, a general thought. We can get more specific when we want to. But that's a, just kind of a laying out again a general path. Here's a couple of things we took from international complexes. A clear co-op identity. It's a co-op-led movement. These things are based on education, innovation, bringing co-ops together. They also seek to partner with municipalities, not for funding, but to get infrastructural support, perhaps relationships for contracts, educational infrastructure. That way, the funding we're using is from co-ops and it's more dependent. Also, as I'm talking, I'm going to pass these out if you want to take a pin. We have some pins made. Right. Um, and also, looks at cooperative enterprise as a multi generational asset for its workers and for its communities. Some of the co ops in these systems are 100, 150 years old. And when you see someone who's a second or third generation member of these co ops, it's extremely empowering. I want to talk a little bit about some of the elements that are specific to VCBA. There's some co op led organizing efforts and really co-op like co-ops that exist in our region. Uh, I talk a little bit about this in a couple of different workshops, but really quickly, these two organizations are run by co-ops, they are co-ops themselves, and they have co-ops as members. That way, the members of these organizations are running their work, dictating the direction, and really I think because of these, the existence of these two, 
the conversation that's across sectors was easier to have. If it was collective copies and pedal people and all the other worker co-ops getting together to try to figure out what to say to other sectors, I think it might take longer. I think it's on us, well, those of us who are worker cooperators, to say to each other, let's try to work out a, something of a general vision together first. Although that's not necessary. That did come in, in handy when we were working together. So here's sort of what we started with for work for VCBA. Uh, putting in shared advertising, getting the word out right away, using IYC. There's a bunch of materials out there, there's great quotes, there's logos, etc. Holding events so we can bring people together across sectors just to start conversation. We also have, and I think if you didn't get one, let me know, but we ran some articles in local food co-op newsletters and other related media that we wanted to reach out to other memberships of other co-ops. And then we had a mayoral and city council proclamation that is now being reviewed by a couple of cities just to start the conversation with uh, policymakers, municipalities, and governments to say, this is what's happening. Co-ops bring um, wealth, jobs, stability, sustainability, mission-driven business to our communities. We want you to recognize it. So we brought that in. Those are the things that kind of take time, that uh, volunteer work is, you know, you want to see something happen over the long term. And the benefit of having co-ops run this stuff is obviously coming. Here's just a little bit of how we're operating. Uh, we want to basically kind of come up with uh, a structure and a basic direction for co-ops to join onto. We want to sort of sit together and do some of that thinking. We also decided to incorporate as a co-op. I think there's a big tendency, and I might say that it's a mistake, to incorporate as a nonprofit, go after grants, try to figure all that out. I think the conversation is more powerful and more valuable. Co-ops are the ones stepping up to fund, stepping up to direct. Sometimes it's a longer conversation. <laughs> Thank you, Western. Get out your flags. Sometimes it's a difficult conversation. Sometimes you can say, man, I can't believe this co-op I just talked to doesn't want to be a part of this co-op. Well, that's where the work starts. Then we want, to, right now we're having a conversation about what to do with dues, what to do with formatting our structure. Am I doing okay on time? Oh, you got two more minutes. Thank you very much. So this is my last slide. I just want to kind of summarize and maybe take one couple of questions before moving on, or we can save it for Jim. But just again to kind of go over what our approach was. There was a bunch of different approaches, all very valuable. It's an honor for me to be up here with these people. Try to see if you can get people with the vision. Urban, Suzette, Mika, John, Sean. To say, yeah, I see the value. I might know not. I might not know exactly what it is. I might have a lot of questions, but I want to work it out. See if you can find that group. Work with that group and develop the things that you share. That way, I think it's easier to go across to other co-ops that are generally overworked, over-demanded, tired. Can we just get some time off? Thank you very much. That way, you can present something for them to sign up on. Have the conversation a little bit easier. If you want to have a meeting, that's fine. If it's a conversation, that's fine. Phone calls, emails, whatever works. But developing that slate was very handy for us. I think incorporating as a co-op, again, is one of the key assets to what we're doing in BCBA. Uh, if, the, if funding is an issue, it's time for members to step up. If they don't want to fund what you're doing, maybe we need to rethink what we're doing and try to go about it so we can get more people at the table. Then. Uh, and I, again, this is part of where the work starts too. Different sectors of co-ops need different things. Worker co-ops don't need a lot of new members because it takes actually a long time to train them, get them involved. A lot of food co-ops and credit unions want a bunch of members, and we want them to have a bunch of members too. You know, the more of that food, the democratized, the more the food democratized, the more money, it's an asset. But that means our needs, our process are a little different, and I think it's up to us to respect that. Also, using IYC 2012 as a conversation starter. Nothing like having this in sort of your back pocket, part of your conversation when you're talking to people. Say, hey, did you know this is happening? Oh, yeah, well, hey, I'm going to give you an opportunity to act on it. And then, again, also, once we have that programming in place, I kind of repeat myself. Then you can go to people and say, this is what we're doing. It's going to put up a couple of resources there in case you want to lay something down and also show this to you. Again, I really want to appreciate you all coming. Bring your curiosity, ask tough questions. 
and we will definitely, we've set aside significant time after our presentations for processing questions back and forth. But thanks a lot, Anna. Thanks so much. I bet there is. <laughs>